Hey everybody, welcome back. Today we're going to be talking about Advance Wars Reboot Camp and Nintendo as a whole. So yes, this game finally, finally came out, bringing two of the best Game Boy Advance games back into the spotlight. I am stoked about that. However, as good as these games are, and believe me, they are really, really good, they also remind me of both the amazing side of Nintendo and the side of Nintendo that's just ugh, so frustrating. And so I want to use Advance Wars sort of as my base in my vessel to talk about Nintendo from a consumerist point of view, or from the consumer point of view, rather. And there's going to be other series and games mentioned, but I'm going to keep coming back to Advance Wars Reboot Camp because I think it's as good an example as any of Nintendo's trends when it comes to developing games. All right, let's get into it. Number one is gameplay versus story. Ask a thousand people why they like Advance Wars, you'll get a thousand different answers. Not literally. But one answer I pretty much guarantee you will not get is anything to do with how good the story is. Because the story is literally not only inconsequential, but it's actually broken. I mean, try to explain the Advance Wars 1 story to me. Okay, you're literally playing through the game and invading other countries, fighting back an enemy then invading other countries, but yet the whole time there's a clone Andy. I don't know. I don't even want to get into it. The story is that bad. And as a longtime Nintendo player, I've noticed this trend quite a bit in Nintendo games. Like, sure, I think the Mario RPG games are really charming and cute, and I think that style works really, really well for Nintendo. But when I think about their more serious games that have plots, something like a Fire Emblem game, they generally get caught in tropes and really end up falling flat. Even the Zelda games don't usually have the most amazing stories. It's been a series for so long that there's just amazing lore that's built into Zelda that makes it fascinating. And Nintendo's really good at making environments and lore. But I don't think their plots are generally that amazing. Now, there are some series that are known for their plots being really good, like the Xenoblade Chronicles games, but that's a company that was working for Bandai Namco originally and kind of switched to Nintendo. And there are some exceptions, like I think Earthbound is generally considered to have a pretty potent story. But, you know, I feel like Nintendo games are generally made to be fun for kids and teenagers, and that might be part of the reason why these stories are not always such a center role, or they kind of keep things simple so everyone can tag along. Maybe I'm wrong on that, I definitely could be. However, Advance Wars plot is just laughably bad and does not add anything to the game, it actually takes away just a little bit. I mean, it's lucky the gameplay is so darn good because, you know, otherwise I don't think I could play Advance Wars. The plus side is that despite this tragic flaw that has seemed to stick with Nintendo for decades now, their games always kill in the gameplay department where it really seems to count the most. And this is why I absolutely love playing Advance Wars, despite not having a good story, because Nintendo just knows how to develop an uber fun game. Point number two is quality titles, but leaving parts of series out. Now, Nintendo has a huge back catalog. We can't really expect to be able to play anything for a multitude of reasons. Now, I think they should do better with their back catalog, but I can certainly see why not every single Nintendo game is available to us at this point. And I'm really happy to have Advance Wars 1 and 2 back. But with that said, there's kind of an elephant in the room here. Like, what happened to Advance Wars Dual Strike and Days of Ruin on the DS? There's a very real chance that those two games will never see the light of day again. Or at least not on the Switch, which is a darn shame. And this isn't really a new phenomenon. We, I mean, look at the Zelda series. We have tons of Zeldas on the Switch, but where is poor Wind Waker? It's stuck on the GameCube and the Wii U. And with Mario, you can play virtually any Mario game on the Switch, but where is Mario Galaxy 2? For some reason, it's oddly left out. And we can't really be sure that these games will be playable again on this console. Knowing Nintendo with those major series, yes, they will come back eventually, but then you might be missing other games in those series on that future console. I feel like this is a giant puzzle now. So in some ways, I'm really, really happy that Nintendo chooses to bring back amazing titles. Like, I'm stoked to have Advance Wars. And honestly, I never thought I'd be playing a fully remade version of Advance Wars 2, which is my absolute favorite GBA game. But I am left wondering if we will ever get the DS sequels again, and I don't think they'd be exactly hard games to port over, so it does kind of feel like a missed opportunity, or an opportunity that they might miss in the future again. Point number three. The asking price might be worth it, but it's hard to compare to other stuff. 
Nintendo's pricing woes are nothing new, and with the Switch, you've seen pretty much none of their games take actual price drops. And when I say none of their games, I mean the games developed by Nintendo. But I am honestly convinced that the Advance Wars Reap Bootcamp is absolutely worth every penny of that asking price in terms of the content. You get two full games, you get a shop with tons of side maps to play, you can create your own maps, there's a semblance of online play since you can play with your friends, and there's easily just tens of hours, if not over 100 hours, for dedicated fans who love Advance Wars. And I think that's really, really impressive for two games that I used to play on a tiny, like, 4-inch screen with no backlight. Nevertheless, it's really hard not to compare this to some other collections. I think a very obvious one to point to would be Konami's Game Boy Advance Castlevania Trilogy getting released on modern consoles. We got Castlevania Circle of the Moon, Harmony of Dissonance, and Aria of Sorrow for a grand total of $20. What a steal, seriously. And we could argue all day that the Advance Wars games are longer and that, you know, there's more content there, but those Castlevania games are still fairly meaty with a fair bit of replay value. And it kind of feels like we are constantly paying premium for the same games we bought many times over in remasters, and sometimes those remasters are basically just ports that are masquerading as remasters, and asking fans to continually pay full price for those games can feel like a slap in the face to some. Now, as I said, I am really satisfied with my purchase here with Advance Wars. But these prices have kept me playing some older games that I wouldn't mind trying out, like Mario U is a game I never played because I never had a Wii U, but that game is competing with so many other amazing Mario games and platformers on the Switch, it's hard for me to justify spending $60 on it. So this is a mixed bag. I do think Nintendo generally does do a good job with ports and remasters, and they give you something that's quality, but it is a little frustrating to know that all of those games will be fully priced, and that games made by other companies will most likely be, be sold for a fairer price. Next is online play. Now, online play was probably a big draw for many people when it came to the Advance Wars reboot camp. And then it came out and it was finally revealed that you could really only play with friends on your friends list. Ouch. Now, let's go back a couple decades. Anyone as old as me right remember something called link cables. These allowed you to rig up multiple Game Boy systems. I believe they worked for the original Game Boy, they definitely worked for Game Boy Color, and they definitely worked for Game Boy Advance. And people pretty much used these solely to either trade or battle Pokemon, but believe it or not, you could actually use it for other games on those consoles as well. And Advance Wars 2 was one that me, my cousin, and my brother used to hook up via link cable all the time in battle in. Enter Reboot Camp, and like I said, now you're stuck with playing with people on your friends list. So, people with friends, you are saved. Wait, 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 no, that's not right. People with friends who play Advance Wars, you are saved. Wait, no, that's not quite right either. Ugh. People with friends who also bought a copy of Advance Wars Reboot Camp are saved. You get the point. Next is, portability intact makes these Game Boy games killer. I don't really like making negative content very much. I prefer to be positive, so let me gush for a minute. The Switch is the perfect console to bring back a pair of old Game Boy games, and the GBA is a choice console since it had so many incredible exclusives. And I absolutely love that Advance Wars is still portable. It fills me with nostalgia while giving me a new experience. I really hope that they keep bringing Game Boy Advance games back, and I really think that the portability makes them look amazing rather than blowing up those pixels on a 4K TV. However, this does leave me with one interesting point. Will Nintendo stick with the original Advance Wars games on the Switch Online? It would be cool to have them there, but it could arguably take sales away from the reboot camp, especially since the remake is very, very similar to those original games. It's not an easy choice for Nintendo, but it is ultimately one that fans might also feel frustrated with. My final point today is that the Nintendo seal of quality means remasters and remakes really usually just need a fresh coat of paint, but at the same time, you never know when you will not be able to play those again. Now, to be honest, Nintendo games tend to age quite well. Not all of them, like I don't personally find F-Zero on the SNES all that fun to play anymore, but Advance Wars shows us that a lot of their old games really just need a fresh coat of paint and some quality of life updates. That's pretty much been true for decades, and Advance Wars doesn't feel a day older than it did back in the early 2000s. However, there is a lingering question here. Will we be able to play this game and others on a Switch successor? 
Or will I be buying some Advance Wars collection with all four games on it on a next console? This is especially important because we are late in the Switch's life cycle now, so buying a game like Advance Wars could feel like a risk to some people. But Nintendo has done this many, many times. Let's just take Mario 3. First, it came out on the NES. Then it was packaged in the Mario All-Stars game for the Super Nintendo. Then it was remade as Mario Advance 4 on the Game Boy Advance. Then you could buy it on the Wii Virtual Console. Then the 3DS. Then the Wii U. And now you can play it by subscribing to Switch Online. All of those would have been separate purchases for what is largely the same game. Now, I totally, totally, totally understand that buying an old SNES cart isn't going to appeal to many modern gamers, so I'm not asking everyone to go out there and find an original Mario 3 on the NES. But we do live in a virtual age where accounts and digital purchases exist, and so there's not really much of an excuse to make people buy the same game, especially just to port, on new consoles. So, Advance Wars does remind me that a two-decade-year-old game has barely aged and that Nintendo's prowess at making games is just second to none. But it also leaves me in fear that future Switch purchases, physical or digital, might never make it to a successor. Alright, overall, I just want to use this video to talk about how Advance Wars fits in with Nintendo's trends, both good and bad, and how they, we can kind of learn more about the company from analyzing some of this stuff. I really do love Nintendo, they're amazing. I have a 64 and a Switch, and they make a lot of my favorite games of all time. And I do think the Advance Wars games definitely deserved a remake. But how about you guys? I have two questions for you. One, did you play the Advance Wars reboot camp? What did you think? And two, what love-hate relationship do you have with Nintendo? That should be a fun one. All right guys, please remember to like and subscribe to the video, or the channel, that's a better idea to subscribe to. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Game on.